I've lived in Michigan my whole life. There's nothing prettier than waking up and seeing a fresh snow or watching the snow fly. I'm 44 years old. I have three kids. I met my husband at college. We just started a friendship there and uh, got to know each other and that grew over time. We were married in 2000. We've been here ever since. My name is Amanda and I've been diagnosed with colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is defined as a growth in the wall of the colon. Cells that are dividing develop mutations and eventually can acquire properties that allow those cells to start to invade and to move to other places in the colon and potentially other spots of the body. I wish that I would have realized that this was actually a possibility for me. I do not have family history or any other of the risk factors. My symptoms were very vague. I had a general discomfort in my stomach, bloating, and just a general feeling that something was off. While many patients can develop colorectal cancer without any signs or symptoms. Symptoms that are seen can be a low red blood cell count, anemia. There can be changes in bowel habits, both constipation, diarrhea, or changes in the caliber of the stool. I went to my doctor to try to figure out exactly, you know, what was causing the problem, and they decided it was um, related to my female organs and it was a reproductive issue. I had a procedure to fix this problem they thought I had. Then my symptoms didn't go away. I ended up going to a new doctor. She did a few tests and suggested I go see a specialist, which I did. After having my colonoscopy, I woke up and my first thing that I remember is feeling a tear on my cheek. It was actually that tear that made me realize that something was wrong. Sure enough, it revealed colon cancer. So. I didn't know anything about cancer. So yeah, that was really scary. The best is if we can identify patients uh, with a screening test well before they have symptoms. On average, there's about a six-month uh, delay in diagnosis uh, from the onset of the symptoms. Obviously, even six months sooner could have really made a difference in my diagnosis. Stage one or two really is cancer that is still in the wall of the colon and hasn't gone anywhere else. A stage three cancer is when it has spread to lymph nodes near the, the colon. Stage four, or what we call metastatic colorectal cancer, is when the cancer has spread through the blood to other parts of the body. So three weeks after my surgery, I had my first chemotherapy treatment. For localized disease, the uh, surgery, uh, potentially the radiation, as well as the chemotherapy, can reduce the risk of recurrence by approximately half. But there are a uh, minority of patients that the cancer will still come back despite these treatments, and so surveillance is important. As part of the surveillance, we're commonly checking blood and uh, imaging tests to see if there's any evidence of recurrence. Years past, all we had were x-rays, where it took about a billion cancer cells until we could see it on a traditional x-ray. But with the advent of these blood-based tests, what we call liquid biopsies, or more specifically circulating tumor DNA, we're looking for microscopic fragments of DNA that are shed from the cancer cells and are present in the circulation. And we think we can detect uh, between 10,000 and 100,000 cancer cells in the body. 
I originally learned about the test by doing my own research online. There was a lot of talk there among patients about this test. So I pursued it with my doctor to try to get one, which I did eventually. They take a portion of my tumor that has already been removed and they do a DNA sequencing on that tumor. And then they develop a assay or a blood test that's specific to my tumor. And they'll draw my blood and check to see if they can find that circulating tumor DNA in my blood. We have to acknowledge these blood tests, while very good, don't tell us where the cancer is in the body. And so there is a bit of uncertainty of how to use these tests. With the CT DNA testing, I know the results could bring added stress or anxiety to a patient. For me personally, I want to know what's there and maybe I have the result and maybe, yeah, they can't treat me based on it, but it helps me to be more aggressive in my monitoring of my cancer and it helps my mindset to know where I'm at and what to prepare myself for. We're now using this to help guide uh, whether patients need additional chemotherapy after surgery, right? Even though the uh, surgery may have gone well, these very sensitive liquid biopsy tests can tell us whether or not there's microscopic disease somewhere in the body. And that can help us in guiding uh, the use of adjuvant therapy. If we can tackle a cancer and treat it when it's just tens of thousands of cancer cells, we think we are going to have a much better chance of curing the cancer even, as opposed to when we are detecting cancers with millions or billions of cells in the body. Following surgery, I had three tests for circulating tumor DNA that were negative, and then I had a positive. At the time that I had my first positive result, my scans did not show any disease. Two months later, I had another circulating tumor DNA test and I had repeat scans. There was a spot in the scan that was questionable. They thought that it was most likely scar tissue. However, the result that I had from the circulating tumor DNA indicated that there most likely was cancer somewhere. And sure enough, we did the biopsy and it did come back that it was cancerous. Surgery is hoping to eradicate that spot and to prevent um, a future recurrence in the area. Colorectal cancer is one of the tumors types that even though it may have spread to distant parts of the body, we can go in with uh, an aggressive surgical approach and potentially cure patients. This can be a, either surgery itself, but it could also be radiofrequency ablation, cryoablation, radiation. For the remainder of patients, we have a number of therapies, uh, chemotherapies, targeted therapies that are really addressing key signaling pathways in the tumor, as well as immunotherapy that tries to harness the immune system to attack the cancer in subsets of colorectal cancer. This one will be the longest hospital stay, most likely. I'll be away from the kids for longer and a harder recovery. Seeing someone you love go through that pain and not even be able to, to interact with you much or interact with her kids, that's the really hard part about it. We recognize that this is a diagnosis that can have substantial impact in the life of patients and family members through their cancer journey. So cancer has changed my life tremendously, but not all for the worse. It has forced me to strengthen my relationships. I think it's important for patients to really have a support network. And there's a number of wonderful patient advocacy uh, groups and support networks out there uh, that are wonderful resources and can help uh, provide that additional level of support. I 
joined um, a couple groups online and found um, wonderful communities. It has given her a chance to do something actively that she can help other people that are in the same situation. I used to worry about who's gonna take this kid to practice because this one has a game at that time or who's, and it used to bring me so much stress and now it's like, those things don't even matter. They'll all work themselves out because in the, the big scheme, they're such minor things. I know 20 isn't typically a big year to celebrate, but for me, it was a, a huge milestone. I thought it was a really good idea. The kids are growing up and they can participate. We, you know, tried to make it lighthearted, but it, it, it was hard not to, uh, not to get pretty emotional. My cancer most likely will never go away. My goal is to be able to keep going long enough to make it to the next big scientific breakthrough. I think the field of colorectal cancer is one that we are seeing tremendous advances. And I think we are very hopeful about what the future uh, holds. And I think there's a lot of enthusiasm about novel uh, treatments and approaches that are coming. And really, it's a matter of uh, trying to understand what is going to be the best uh, treatment approach for an individual patient. Uh, but we still have to recognize that the most important thing is awareness and screening. We do make every effort to, to make the best of everything and to take advantage of every moment that we have. It just kind of frees you um, in your your life and the way you think when you live more on a day-to-day -day basis trying not to worry about the future too much. <laughs>